Hey everybody, I'm Chris, and this is my channel, Chesapeake Chris. Thanks for stopping by. If you've watched many videos on my channel, you probably realize there's three basic types of fishing that I generally do. As I said on a previous video, I don't fly fish, but my three basic types of fishing are kayak fishing, surf or pier fishing, and bank fishing from ponds, you know, lakes, rivers, etc. So I had a viewer ask about, it was, in, it was in particular to the surf fishing, what equipment I use, what kind of rigs I use, how do I do it? So I thought I'd make a video showing the equipment I use, including the rigs, talk about the bait and how I rig it, and I'm going to do a short little section on this video for each type of fishing I do. Surf and pier fishing, kayak fishing, and bank fishing from ponds, lakes, and rivers. So if you want to see the equipment I use and how I rig them and how I catch all the fish you see me catch on my channel, please stick around. Let's start with kayak fishing. When I'm out fishing in my kayak, I mainly am targeting rockfish. However, I do catch other fish. I catch a lot of white perch, an occasional flounder, maybe an occasional lizard fish or a bluefish or a speckled trout. But I'm a big fan of uh, light tackle. So the two rods I predominantly use in my kayak is this little, this first one is a Shakespeare five and a half foot ultralight rod. It's a graphite rod. It's got the cork handles. It's very light action. I have my Luz Laser Speed Spin 200 reel on it. I absolutely love that reel. It may be a little large for this five and a half foot rod, but I like the reel so much that I keep it on that rod. So that's one of the rods I'm mainly trolling with when I'm in my kayak. The second one, I bought this rod a little while ago. This is actually a Shimano. And it is also a five and a half foot rod, but it's medium action and it's old technology. It is fiberglass, not graphite. It has the old ceramic guides. It has the old foam handle. Um, it's got a lot more backbone than that Shakespeare, which is good for when you're trolling and you hook into a rockfish. And I outfitted that one with my Cast King 2000 reel, spinning reel. Once again, that reel fits on that rod very nice. That's a really nice reel that I like, and that rod there has the backbone to really hook set a rockfish and get him in. Now, since I, I do own a bait caster, but like I said, I troll probably 90% of the time, but I have a Cast King bait caster. I very rarely use it because I don't cast that often. It's a, it's a six foot medium action, I believe, and I very rarely use it. I have a video on how to set up the reel so you don't get bird's nests, but I really haven't used it much to really get the knack of how to do it. Because like I say, I don't cast that much. So I do have this rod and reel, but I very rarely use it. And like most fishermen, I am I probably have like over 20 fishing rods. I'm sure I have more than I need. But I do have a couple here that I use for like emergency spare backups. And my backups are this Okuma graphite five foot rod now i still have the five footer if you watch my one video the five and a half footer broke so i don't have that rod anymore but i got a uh, little cast king they call it a 500 reel but it's a small reel so, and that reel fits that little five foot graphite akuma very well so i have that and then i've been using this one lately i bought this at the kent island fisherman's club flea market twenty dollars for rod and reel it is actually a Shakespeare Navigator. And once again, this is a medium action. Now this one's six foot, but it's medium action. All the old technology, fiberglass, ceramic eyelets, foam handle, and it came with this reel. So all I did is put some of that Suffix Elite line on it. But those are the backup poles I use in case I'd have a pole break or whatever. So that covers my kayak fishing rods. Now let's look at a couple lures I use. 
So when I'm trolling in my kayak and I'm targeting rockfish, like I said, I catch a lot of white perch also. Um, some of the lures I love, I love underspins. I love this slab runner underspin. I love the VMC spin jig. Um, once again, some of my favorite colors are chartreuse or red when it comes to those. Now, I also use chatter baits, and sometimes they're not very big. I got a ruler laid out here so you can kind of see. Uh, you notice two of them, the heads are painted with fingernail polish, like I said I do. But I have good luck with the dark bluish purple chatter baits, like those two there are. Sometimes I put a chicken foot body on it. We're going to talk about chicken foot here in a minute. And sometimes I just leave it green and notice that one's just a little bit bigger than these guys. But I can catch rockfish on these little chatterbaits. I mean 20 inch rockfish. Which is not a bad rockfish for a 10 foot kayak. One of my favorite lures you're hearing me talk about other than the purplish blue chatterbait is the chicken foot. What I do with my chicken foot is I take an underspin jig head with a chicken foot body and then I put it on a beetle spin blade so it has two blades. Now I'm always talking about the chicken foot. The chicken foot is basically just a, a, a color pattern that is kind of pink and greenish chartreuse. It's those two colors. Like I say, there's one there with the curly tail. This chatterbait has uh, one with just the paddle tail. But that's the chicken foot pattern. Rockfish seem to love this pattern and perp seem to like it too. And then just recently, I purchased this three section jointed minnow now that's a pretty good size lure as you can see so it's about four inches long and uh, it's jointed with a blue back and it has rattles i've been catching a lot of rockfish on that guy but believe it or not i will also catch white perch on that they will hit on that big lure and then the last thing i want to show you i want to try this year i watch a channel called want to fish all day i've mentioned him before love his channel I watched him trolling in a kayak using a small umbrella rig like this, catching rockfish. So I bought a small umbrella rig, and I put white bodies on it, and I am really curious to take this thing out and try it out this spring. Now, he has an electric motor, so it's easier for him to troll with something like this, and I paddle. We'll see how it works out. I put white bodies on it because I talked to a charter boat captain that charters boats on the Chesapeake. He said in the spring he likes white for rockfish. Once it gets later in the year, summer and fall, then he'll switch over to chartreuse. So I'm really looking forward to trying this umbrella rig out. And one last lure I had luck with this year fishing for rockfish is this spoon that I literally made by cutting the handle off a dollar store spoon drilling a hole in it, putting a swivel on the front, and a treble hook on the back. I was trolling with this spoon, and I think that little five-foot ultralight Shakespeare rod when I hooked and landed a 23-inch rockfish on this spoon that I made from a dollar store spoon. So I actually use this quite a bit now. Now, when I fish ponds and rivers and streams, it kind of depends on what I'm fishing for. If I'm just fishing someplace for bass, and I'm throwing lures, I'll usually use that Shakespeare six foot that I bought. Because it's six foot so I can cast a little better, maybe get a little more distance than I would with a five or a five and a half footer. And it is medium action. So it'll handle bass and things. But if I'm fishing for catfish, and the catfish I fish for in some of these ponds are 20, 24, 25 inches long, I generally take my surf rods, a couple of my surf rods, because I can cast them really far. Um, this surf rod is a nine foot Shimano. I use that one a lot. Uh, it just has a cheap reel on it. Honestly, both of these have cheap reels on them. And this is the 12 foot beef stick rod that I bought off Amazon that Shelly and I tested in that one video to see how well it would cast. These are what I use when I catch catfish in that pond. Now, what I do for a rig is I use the sliding sinker rig. I put and I usually use about a two ounce for that pond. And then I tie my own two drop rigs. And I have a video coming up on how to do that. But anyways, I tie my own two drop rigs and I use a pretty good size circle hook. Because like I say, these catfish are 20, 25 inches long. And then I put a little teeny sinker on the end just to help with casting and to keep everything from getting tangled. So this is a two 
circle hook, high, low, drop rig. And for catfish, what I normally use is cut bait and night crawlers. And I'll just go to the local sporting goods store and get a cheap frozen fish. I'll thaw it out. I'll cut it into sections. And sometimes I hook a piece of fish cut bait and a night part of a night crawler on each hook. So that are the that's the rods I use when I fish these ponds for those catfish. Oh, and I use 20, I think it's 20 pound high vis yellow or green line. I do use 20 pound line for those. So that's the rods I use, the rigs I actually use, and how the bait that I use to catch them. Now surf fishing is a little more complex. Normally I'm surf fishing with my friend Ray and we do pretty much the same thing. What I do initially is my nine foot Shimano here. I will rig that up with another high low rig that I tied with smaller circle hooks. And I usually put cork floats on them. Sometimes I paint them with fingernail polish. But I'll put a high low rig on that with smaller circle hooks and I will throw that out and try and get some bait fish. I'll try to catch like some mullet or whatnot. Now, when it comes to catching the bait fish, there's a lot of things you can use. We have found, me and Ray, I think, that the best thing we find to use for bait fish is bloodworms. So we usually get some bloodworms. You can also catch them on fish bites. We do that sometimes. It comes in different colors. And you can also catch them on fish gum. And you can also use sand fleas, squid, all kinds of stuff. We have found that generally bloodworms are the best thing for catching small bait fish. So I'll set this nine footer up with that high low rig and we'll try to catch a couple bait fish first so that we can use them to catch for, to fish for bigger fish. Once we get our bait fish, we usually cut them into two or three pieces. And then once again, it depends on what I'm fishing for. If I'm fishing for red fish that may not be real big or I'm fishing for decent blues or something like that, a lot of times I'll just use a pretty decent size circle hook on a high low rig again. And I'll use anywhere from a three to a five ounce sinker usually. Um, now when I do it for those fish, I don't put it on the sliding sinker part. I can, I literally just leave this on there. You can actually take that metal clip off if you want, but I leave this on there. And what I do is I hook my sinker right onto the same swivel that I'm going to hook my high-low rig on. So my, my sinker's on there, then I put my high-low rig on there. With the little teeny sinker again at the bottom. My swivels I use when I'm fishing for bigger fish, I get generally this style of swivel. And it's a good heavy rated ball bearing swivel. I usually get ones that are rated for like 90, 100 pounds. So that's how I rig up. And I usually do a high-low rig, but sometimes I just do a single drop rig. I tie some of them up too. Here's one here that I put a cork and some beads on it. That's just a single drop rig that I tied up. Now for specifically targeting shark, it's even a different story altogether. I rigged up this 10 foot rod with a bigger reel and 75 pound braid. And I was gonna use the drone to drop big cut bait out there for sharks. As I said in my previous video, you can't do that in North Carolina anymore. So I tried casting some stuff out with this and it seemed like I couldn't cast out very far. I don't know if it's because it's 75 pound braid or what. So that's why I actually caught my shark in my other video on that 12 footer with that reel and with like 20 or 25 pound monofilament. But the rig we use to do for sharks now is a little different. Once again, I have a really good swivel and I hook my sinker, my four or five ounce sinker, whatever on there. Then I hook an 18 inch steel leader on there. And then on the end of that steel leader, I put a big circle hook. Anywhere from a number 12 to a number 15, depending on how big a sharks you're trying to catch and what you're using for bait. So that's how I rig for shark. I'll just put that steel leader on there with that big circle hook. I'll hook half of like a mullet or something on there. I'll have my sinker up here where my swivel is, and I'll throw that thing way out there and hope for the best. But if we're targeting only shark, that's the change I make. And I may try using this rod again with the 75 pound braid, see if I can get it out there very far. But if not, I'll just go back to the 12 footer with the 25 pound mono. I think it's 25 pound. That's what I landed that last shark on. Well, that's the equipment, the rigs, and the bait 
and how I use it to catch the fish that I catch. Uh, I'm not saying it's the right way, the only way, or even the best way. That's just how I do things. And I do pretty good surf fishing, and I do pretty good out of my kayak, considering it's only a very inexpensive 10-foot paddle kayak. I think I catch a lot of nice fish. So anyways, I hope you enjoyed this video, and you all know the drill. If you did like this video, please give me a thumbs up. If you really like my channel and my content, think about hitting the subscribe button. And if you hit the notification bell, you'll get notified when I put out new content. Thanks for watching this video and thanks to all my supporters. I'll see you on the next video.